this weekend, former Florida Governor Jeb Bush was on the offensive. He was all over the airwaves, hitting all the major Sunday shows, including Univision, talking about his book, Immigration Reform, and dodging questions about his intentions for 2016. But while he wouldn't reveal whether he was definitely going to run for president, he did share his opinion on why President Obama won in November. And he won by, um, in some ways, dividing the country. I think he ran a campaign of them and us, and it was quite effective uh, that somehow the Republicans don't care about the large number of people. The president is dividing the country? Is he just playing the opposite game? This is dividing the country, Mitt Romney's infamous 47% company, uh, comment. That fit right in with the GOP's makers and takers worldview. The president has continually extended an olive branch to the other side, only to have it thrown back at him. Now, Jeb Bush is an impressive candidate with a strong background. I know him, and he's a powerhouse in his party. But this is just more of the same from the party that just can't seem to get its act together. Joining me now is Wayne Slater, senior political writer for the Daily Morning News and co-author of Bush's Brain, How Karl Rove Made George W. Bush Presidential. And Victoria DeFrancesco Soto, professor at the University of Texas and an MSNBC contributor. Thank you both for being here tonight. Thanks, Rev. Let me go to you first, Wayne. Uh, Jeb Bush's media blitz shows he's thinking about a run. How can he come out thinking about a run, saying he's different, but he's recycling that old line that President Obama is a divider? I mean, we, that was rejected last year. How's he coming out with the same old nonsense? Well, remember, I, I think this is what focus groups and polls indicate Americans want. They want finally a politics in Washington, which is now dysfunctional, and a leader who can bring people together. And so he's saying what people say that they want. He's also recycling something that his brother, George W. Bush, said in 2000 when he was a compassionate conservative, if you remember that. So he's talking about what people want. The problem is every time he does this, then he reminds people that he was part of a continuing division in our politics through the 2000s under his brother's administration. But, but, but uh, Victoria, I agree the polls say people want someone to bring us together, but the actual polls say they saw President Obama as a unifier, not a divider, because all last year, Mitt Romney and Ryan tried to make the divider, President Obama, and that was widely rejected. So wouldn't he be wise to not try and miscast the president as a divider when that's been roundly rejected by the American people? Well, what we're seeing with Jeb Bush is a lot of wishy-washiness. He wants to have his cake and eat it, too. So he, he wants to shore up that conservative base of his party. But at the same time, he wants to make inroads into the general electorate, those people who are hungry for a more conciliatory type of politics. And in particular, he's angling for Latinos. Now, interestingly enough, Latinos were very supportive of his brother, George W. Bush. But what I think, if I'm looking into the crystal ball, is that Jeb Bush thinks the comprehensive reform is going to pass. So that way, when 2015 rolls around and it's primary time, he can take immigration reform off the table and not worry about it. And he can flip flop back and say, OK, well, it was implemented and citizenship reform worked well. So I support it now. Latinos come support me. General Electric come support me. He wants to have his cake and eat it, too. Well, but, but Victoria, uh, I think that he should hope that is off the table because let's look at him on immigration and the path to citizenship since you brought it up. On June 12th of 2012, he told CBS he supports the path to citizenship. But then on March 4th of this year, he claimed he doesn't support a path to citizenship. A day later, the very next day, March 5th, his book is released, which calls the path to citizenship a magnet for illegal immigration. Then later the same day, March 5th, he says he's open to a path to citizenship. 
Follow me here now. Two days later, he claimed Marco Rubio wasn't for a path to citizenship while he was writing the book. And yesterday on the Sunday shows, he again claimed he supports a path to citizenship, saying, quote, I haven't changed. He hasn't changed. I guess he hasn't changed in the last second. But it, hold it, it, I got more on Fox News Sunday. He, in fact, flip flop on himself within less than a minute. I mean, he owes the politics nation record now. In a minute, he flipped. Watch this. People can stay here. Sixty percent of the people that uh, that were granted uh, a process of legalization and citizenship in uh, 1987 uh, did not apply for citizenship. They stayed as legal residents of the country. I also think that a path to citizenship, so long as the 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 ability of someone to come legally is easier and less costly than coming illegally, uh, that a path to citizenship is appropriate. So. It's appropriate at the end, but it wasn't in the beginning. They were just staying here. This is inside of a minute, Victoria. If you think the, the public is not confused, try me. It's a lot of temporary amnesia, but he's not alone. McCain has flip-flopped more than a dozen times on immigration. Marco Rubio, he, was, he ran against granting citizenship to undocumented folks. That was one of the landmarks yeah. of his campaign, and now he's all for it. So I just expect it. The GOP moves on immigration depending on the political winds. And Jeb Bush right now thinks it's appropriate to stand here once this gets out of the limelight, we're going to see him move again. The Bushes are fundamentally liberal when it comes to immigration. From Bush 41 to George W. Bush and Jeb Bush, they believe in open borders. They just don't know how to frame it depending on where we are in the campaign season. Well, they're also liberal on uh, changing their positions. But yes. let me go back to you a minute, Wayne. He was uh, asked about his family name and if it could pose any problems for him. Listen to his answer. I don't think there's any Bush baggage at all. I love my brother. I'm proud of his accomplishments. I love my dad. I am proud to be a Bush. And if I run for president, it's not because of um, something in my DNA that compels me to do it. Is the Bush name a problem for him, Wayne? You, you betcha it is. And, I, and Victoria was exactly right. I think immigration, even though he's misplayed it, may not be his big, big problem when he tries to get the Republican nomination. It is the Bush name. How can you run as a fiscal conservative without uh, distancing yourself from your big brother's uh, big spending, arriving with an office with a surplus and leaving with a deficit? How can you inspire confidence as a uh, foreign policy person when increasingly, not among Democrats and progressives and moderates and independents, but increasingly among conservative Republicans, the war in Iraq is seen in bad odor, that it is seen as a war we never should have gotten into, that we got into under false pretenses. How can he run as an anti-Bush, as other people will on the war and spending and other issues, when you are a Bush? I think that's the big problem that Jeb Bush is going to have. How do you run as a Bush and run against the legacy of his brother? Well, both of you have uh, studied them up close in Texas. Uh, I just know a wise man from Texas that told me to stay out the bushes. Wayne Slater and Victoria DeFrancesco Soto, thanks for your time. Ahead, Great to be with you. movie star Ashley Judd may be ready for a close-up in Washington. She could be running and trying to take down the most powerful Republican in the Senate. And Scott Brown was the Tea Party guy, right? The regular Joe driving a pickup truck. Just wait until you see the news about him today. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. We do not give up. Expect surprises. Subscribe.